life as we know it uh, wouldn't have happened without cyanobacteria. Cyanobacteria are important because they were the first organisms that produce oxygen and they produce oxygen by a process known as oxygenic photosynthesis. They're very basically fundamental organisms that have been important through the Earth history, but they still play an important role in today. From the geological record, uh, we know that the gray oxygenation happened at around 2.3 billion. What we see during Earth history is a, an oxygenation event happening at that time. Oxygen levels increase to very small quantities, but it took over a billion years before we had an atmosphere that had oxygen concentration similar to the ones that we have today. And that happened around 800 to 600 million years ago. We've been isolating some cyanobacteria from the polar regions. So we're getting samples from the Arctic and the Antarctica from different habitats. Probably what happened during the early Earth is that these guys were filamentous, they were in freshwater environments. Having been in, in the interstellar environments, it is around sort of 800 to 600 million years ago that we had the first cyanobacteria starting to colonize the open ocean. And as they did so, they oxygenated the oceans completely and oxygen levels increased. And shortly after, we have the origin of animals. So I was born in Colombia. As a child, um, I was really inspired by one of the TV series um, that arrived to Colombia called Cosmos, which was presented by Carl Sagan, the famous American astronomer. I started by studying my microbiology, um, but halfway through uh, my undergraduate, I went to the States um, and I took a course with Lynn Margulis, um, who is a famous microbiologist. She uh, contributed significantly to the theory of endosymbiosis. And having taken that course, uh, at that point, I knew I wanted to be an evolutionary biologist. I finished my PhD when I was about 30. And at that point, um, I moved to the UK because my husband um, work is English. An opportunity came up uh, to work on cyanobacteria in the field of thermolecular ecology. Um, so because I thought cyanobacteria were interesting, um, I thought, yeah, why not go for that? Um, although what that meant is that I was sort of starting again um, because it was a very different field to what I had done for my PhD. It was during my second postdoc that we had uh, our first child. And in fact, during that postdoc, I had two kids. Um, and um, it was towards the end of that um, postdoc that I decided to leave science. And when I went on my second maternity leave, I knew that there would be no job at the end of it. So I just thought, you know, probably the best sensible thing to do is sort of move on, um, concentrate on the family at that point. Um, I also, my kids are also very close in age um, and it was physically very demanding. Going back and looking at the time when my kids were small, I love to have been, you know, to have spent those years with them. You know, three, four years, I was able to sort of really spend a lot of time with my kids. It's, it's priceless. I went back to science uh, because I wanted to do something good um, and I wanted to sort of contribute for future generations and having kids really brings that to mind. I think for me, the hardest thing to do was to decide to go back into science, partly because I knew it was going to be difficult. I, I was going to have to catch up with new developments in science and in my field. Um, but once um, I started thinking about a project and formulating a project and I got really excited, um, there was no going back. I didn't think it was possible uh, when I had my career break. But having gone through the process is definitely possible. It's definitely possible to sort of um, take a break and go back to it. Um, 
is challenging, you know, it's not necessarily easy, but it's definitely possible. And there are opportunities out there, uh, like for instance, the Daphne Jackson Trust, um, the Dorothy Hodgkin, um, the, the Royal Society scheme that helps people um, not only to go back to science if you want to, but also gives you the flexibility that you need uh, when you have a young family. I love interdisciplinary research. Uh, I love um, thinking maybe ideas that nobody's ever thought before, uh, being at the forefront, um, sort of leading something. What I'm doing now is completely fascinating and in a way I'm, ha I'm happy I had that break, you know, sort of really helped me reformulate things and, and I went back into science being a completely sort of, not being a completely different person, but having different motivations and, and perhaps a different sort of type of determination.